new videos every day. Today's topic is really important. You can definitely benefit from this. We are talking about hunger today. Why is it that our hunger exceeds the amount of food that we need to eat to survive? We are supposed to have this built-in hunger mechanism that's to regulate how much and what we eat, but something's wrong because two-thirds of Americans are overweight. So we are eating to get full and to satisfy that hunger craving, yet we're eating too much, so there's a problem. So today we are going to talk about why people are hungry, how to control your hunger, and how to lose weight the healthy way. Now the first thing I want to clear up is what hunger is because I think a lot of people have a slight misconception that hunger is just the feeling that you get when you need energy and that's partially right but there's a whole spectrum of nutrients that your body will crave if you don't get that nutrient and it's not just you know sugar protein or fat those are the macronutrients so if you have any questions or you know want to find out more about all the nutrients that your body needs. I did make a video called Understanding Food and that would be a great video to watch. It's a great breakdown of all those different things. Um, and I think a lot of people think that thirst and hunger are different or that eating and drinking are different, but they're actually very similar because thirst is the way that your body tells you that you need water and water is a nutrient. And hunger is a way that your body tells you that you need something. And whether it be sugar or whether it be vitamins or minerals or protein. So you have these cravings because you're not getting what your body needs. Eating and drinking are essentially the same thing. So if you are eating ice cream or if you're drinking a milkshake, you have to actually realize that those both are are foods and then they both have calories and then they both are going to impact your weight and so unless you're just drinking water whatever you drink you know you have to consider it as a food and then if you drink it and eat it that's the way that we refuel our bodies and get nutrients to ourselves I think a lot of people mistake the feeling of hunger for thirst because one of the first signs that you're dehydrated is that you feel hungry. So it's easy to overeat if you are just trying to satisfy your thirst by eating. So <clears throat> the simplest solution would be to drink some water when you feel hungry. And if your hunger persists, then you know that you're actually needing food. So if you don't have liquid, you know, water right next to you, there is water that is present in fruits and vegetables in high amounts. So for instance, in watermelon and melons, they have a high percentage of water. So you will get that water from that food. And so that is really why that hunger exists and, and you, you know, you search for food and, and really your body just needs water. Now this is really dangerous. If you feel thirsty and you are satisfying that thirst with soda pop or tea or um, you know sweetened coffee or juices or any of the beverages that are out there, in order to satisfy that thirst, you're getting a ton of extra calories when all your body needs is water, which is no calories. So you're getting all these added calories just to satisfy your thirst. So you're drinking basically liquid candy if you're drinking Coke. So you're getting 250 calories when you could have satisfied that thirst with zero calories. So that brings us to sugar cravings. Now this could be actually the most important thing that you listen to on the video because I think everybody deals with sugar cravings and you either have dealt with it in the past or you're dealing with it right now. So let's just go through an explanation of what is happening in your body when you eat something that has a lot of sugar in it. So say you have a Coke or a piece of cake or a candy bar or, you know, a bunch of french fries or a sandwich with like tons and tons of bread on it or something like that. So you eat this food and it turns into glucose. And so that glucose is a sugar molecule and it's sent into your bloodstream. And so your your glucose is right here and then your the food that's converted gets 
you know, sends to your bloodstream and then your glucose starts going up. So it starts going up and so it's too high. So your pancreas over here has insulin and then it releases the insulin to combat that glucose. So then it, you know, connects to the glucose to bring it back down to a normal level. But what happens a lot of times is it'll bring it too low. So that glucose is too low and you get hungry because you have low blood glucose. So then if you're not aware of the cycle, you actually get that hunger feeling and you go look for something else. And then because you're not choosing healthy foods, you choose foods that are too high in sugar. So the same thing happens. Your blood glucose spikes and then your, your pancreas has to secrete insulin to combat the glucose. It comes down, but then it goes too low. Then you feel tired and lethargic and hungry. So then you go look for something else. So then you have this wave of up and down of the glucose in your bloodstream. And so over time, this can lead to hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, diabetes, inflammation, fatigue. I mean, just a host of problems. Now, when people normally think about hunger, they think about calories, but that's not the whole picture. There are a host of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that your body will crave and you don't necessarily need calories. For example, if you need vitamin C, you may crave citrus fruits. If you need iron, you may crave red meat or spinach. Or if you need vitamin A, you may crave orange vegetables and fruits. So there's this host of nutrients that our body needs. And if we don't get what we need, then we're going to crave it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we need you know, all this food or all these calories, our body is looking for that nutrient that we don't have enough of. Now, as an added note, you do need vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. They're not optional. You have to have them in your diet. So what happens is if you do not get these vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, you're keeping your body from getting these substances, which will help you digest, absorb, and utilize everything else that you eat. So you're not going to have enough energy and that you're going to feel more hungry just because you didn't eat the foods that had the nutrients that your body needed. So just because you're hungry doesn't necessarily mean that you need calories. It may mean just that you need to eat more nutrient-rich foods. Now we've talked about the things that your body can crave, so let's talk about things that can mess up your hunger drive. Two-thirds of Americans are overweight. That's not a normal condition. So let's look at that hunger drive and what we're doing on a daily basis that could be impacting that. So number one, sugar. Majority of people eat way too much sugar. So we've already discussed this. When we eat too much sugar, our blood glucose goes way too high. Our pancreas releases insulin to combat it and it brings it too low. So our blood glucose is too low and we get hungry. So now that you know what your body can crave, let's talk about what we do on a daily basis that interferes with our hunger drive because hunger and cravings are really a natural mechanism for a body to tell us what we need to function properly. So if our hunger is out of control, we are doing something that is influencing it. It's not supposed to be like that naturally. So there's several things that interfere with hunger and we're going to talk about those. Now I do want to mention that there is a difference between a natural craving and an unnatural craving. So a natural craving would be if you're thirsty because your body needs water or if you're hungry because you haven't eaten breakfast or because you need nutrients or you need calories or you know you're craving citrus because you need vitamin C and there's a complete difference between that and if you're craving something that you are addicted to like excessive sugar or a chemical or you know a drug so in one instance your body is naturally telling you what you need to function and the other way you are creating an artificial dependence on something that you actually don't need in the first place now one of the things that can impact your hunger is sugar excessive refined sugar We've already explained this a little bit, but when you get that wave of 
blood sugar going up and down and up and down, you're creating more hunger than what your body would naturally have. High fructose corn syrup works the same way in that when you have products and you eat foods that have high fructose corn syrup in them, you are keeping your insulin and your leptin, which are two hormones that regulate how full you feel, you're keeping those from functioning properly. So sugar is a drug. You can be addicted to it just like any drug. And you are creating an artificial dependence on, you know, something that you would need in normal amounts, but because you've consumed it so excessively, you keep craving it. And so if you think it's not hard to stop sugar completely, try doing it for three days and you'll see how hard it is. You'll see those cravings are definitely there. Now, as an added note, refined sugar is not part of a normal diet. So when you think about all the people that have come over to North America when the New World was founded, back in Europe, there wasn't ref- uh, sugar cane for refined sugar and there wasn't corn for high fructose corn syrup. So our bodies were not built to handle refined sugar and high fructose corn syrup. And yet they're so excessive in our diet. So that is why we were having so many problems. In summary of uh, what we just talked about with sugar impacting your hunger, when you are eating excessive amounts of sugar, your blood sugar is going like this. You have a yo-yo effect and it's going up and down and up and down. So you are creating peaks of high blood sugar and and valleys of low blood sugar. So when you hit that low blood sugar, you feel hungry. So when you're eating excessive amounts of sugar, you are going to be hungry. That's just it. The next thing that can interfere and and actually impact your hunger is MSG. This is monosodium glutamate. This is a flavor enhancer that is added to a ton of processed foods, packaged foods, and they're also in restaurant foods that you order off of the menu. And it impacts the mechanism in your brain that tells you when you're full. And so you keep eating because you don't feel full or you don't feel full as fast. So you keep eating because you feel more hungry and then you tend to overeat. Now this is probably something you do not know. When scientists want to do testing on hyperglycemia or diabetes, they do testing in labs on obese mice. Well, when was the last time you saw an obese mouse in nature? They actually don't exist. So scientists actually have to create obese mice in the lab. And how do they do this? They pump them full of MSG. The next thing I want to talk about is artificial sweeteners because these can increase your hunger. Even though that diet drink may say zero calories, it interferes with normal metabolism. And then also it acts as an acytotoxin. So it basically is fooling you into craving sugary foods. So if you're consuming foods that have alternative sweeteners, you actually can increase your sugar cravings. Now we've talked about things that can increase your hunger, but you may just be hungry because you need food. So you may feel that hunger pang because you need nutrients and you need vitamins and you need minerals. And if you are eating food that doesn't have those vitamins, those minerals, and those nutrients, you're going to keep being hungry. So you're at the fast food restaurant and you order a burger and I don't know, say the meal that you eat is 2000 calories for just that one meal. Well, the the most nutrient dense thing on that burger is going to be that little tiny slice of tomato. And even that is going to be limited in nutrients because it probably came from some conventional farm somewhere, you know, shipped all across the nation, plucked early. So it's not even right. You know, I mean, just that tomato isn't even going to have that much in it. So you're getting 2000 calories, but you're not getting the nutrients and the vitamins you need. So you're going to be hungry. Now, I think this is one of the main problems with the obesity epidemic and the American diet is the fact that we are eating such processed, non-nutrient dense foods. Our foods that we are eating or the majority of America is eating is so rich in calories, but so low in nutrients. 
So we get that hunger pang and then we go find foods that are so processed, they're almost devoid of every nutrient that our body needs. And then in order to process those calories, our body needs nutrients. So what it does is it has to pull these nutrients from our cells and from the rest of our body just in order to digest and absorb what we just ate. So not only are we not getting what we need in the food, we're depleting our cells just to digest it. So it's a really horrible cycle to be in and the majority of Americans are overweight. So that means that they're not choosing the right foods. They're eating processed foods. Um, you know, exercise is definitely a part of it, but if we can just eat the right foods, nutrient dense foods, and those are going to be your fruits and vegetables, have the most vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, nutrients that you can imagine with the lowest calorie content. So if we would just focus more on those foods rather than all the packaged, processed, convenient foods out there, we would make such a dent in the obesity epidemic, it wouldn't even be funny. So basically the solution is, number one, avoid all things that interfere with your hunger drive, and those include refined sugar, excessive sugar, drugs, MSG, artificial sweeteners, um, chemicals, all those things we've already mentioned. Number two, eat the most nutrient-dense foods possible. These are mainly going to be your fruits and vegetables. These are going to provide the nutrients that your body needs in order that you don't have excessive hunger. And number three, eat fiber-rich foods. We haven't gone over this a whole lot, but fiber is considered a carbohydrate. It's listed under the carbohydrates on a nutrient label. Um, most of it is insoluble, so it's going to promote um, healthy bowel movements when you do consume it. But the great thing about fiber is that it makes you feel full, and it doesn't contribute a whole lot to calories. So if you eat fiber-rich foods, you'll feel full, you won't feel hungry, and then you're also going to get nutrients in the food that you just ate. So the simple point I want to make is that if you avoid things that increase your hunger and you eat foods that are nutrient-dense and provide your body what you need, you're just not going to be as hungry. Yeah, you're going to be hungry when your body needs something like carbohydrates for energy or, you know, vitamin C or vitamins and minerals, things like that. You're going to be hungry when you're supposed to be hungry, but you're not going to be excessively hungry. So if you just pay attention to what you're eating, you're just not going to be as hungry. It's that simple. As a final note to this video, I want to talk about the difference between people going on a diet and people changing their diets because they want to be healthier. You know, there are a ton of diets out there and, you know, everyone is the newest and greatest and best thing and it's going to help you lose weight the quickest and the fastest and the easiest. But if you are seeking out weight loss through that method, you're not changing your lifestyle long term. And that's the problem. If you're seeking out a diet, that is a problem in itself because you have to adopt a healthy lifestyle. It's not just about losing weight. It's about becoming healthier. And, and that's what, what frustrates me as a nutrition professional when people are like, oh, well, I eat fast food, but I don't eat too much. I don't, you know, eat too large of a portion. So I'm, I'm at a good weight. So I'm fine. Well, that's not the point. The point is, yeah, you may be at a good weight, but that doesn't mean that the insides are healthy. So I just want to make the point that just because you're going on a diet doesn't necessarily mean that is the best way to lose weight or to become healthy. You do have to make a long-term lifestyle change, and that is the best way to be healthy. So I just wanted to make this video because if we are informed and educated, we are going to make better decisions about what we eat, and that is going to make us healthier. If you want to learn more about sugar and what excessive sugar does to your body, I have a video called Soft Drink Challenge and another video in two parts, part one and part two, called The Truth About Sugar. These are great videos, very informative. Um, so subscribe because I'm going to make a video soon about stress and the stress series. And I will see you next time. Take care of yourself.